Start increasing your influence and maximizing your potential with Rhea's audiobooks. Available at audible.com, amazon.com, and iBooks. Please visit RiaStory.com to learn about Ria's books, resources, speaking, and training programs. Thanks for listening. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode on the thief of joy. You've probably heard the quote before. I think it's Theodore Roosevelt who's attributed with it and saying, comparison is the thief of joy. And to me, what that really means is so much of the time, so often we compare our journey to someone else's. And sometimes we, you know, that can be inspiring in a lot of different ways. But a lot of times we get ourselves into trouble because we compare our beginning to somebody else's middle chapters or finish line. Or perhaps we compare our story to someone else's and then we feel like we fall short. We're comparing our journey to someone else's, but we've had a different journey than someone else. And so a lot of times that can steal our joy because when we start comparing ourselves, we can almost always find someone that we're doing better than, but we can also almost always find someone that we are doing worse than. And the problem is when we start comparing ourselves to others, then it's easy for us to feel like we don't measure up in some way because we're not them. And so when you're not somebody else, you shouldn't be getting the results that somebody else is. So comparison can be the thief of joy. Now, this, for me, this shows up, um, you know, and really probably a lot of this has, has, Come kind, of, kind of been a light bulb moment for me in my running journey because you've if you've heard some of my podcasts before on on my running journey and how I didn't identify myself as an athlete um, for much of my early life and I didn't think of myself as that athlete and so I didn't act like an athlete and so I didn't get the results that I get today with better choices and better training and better mindset to be completely honest. But even so, I mean, I, I don't think it's a limiting belief. I think it's a little bit of reality that, you know, I'm never going to break the world's record in a marathon. And that's okay. That's not my journey. That's that's certainly not my calling. I'm never even going to try. Um, I don't even think it's physically possible because that's just not how my body is built. Now, absolutely, I can get better in my training and my running, and I have, gotten much better and much stronger and my endurance is better and my training has been better. My eating has been better. My sleeping has been better. And all of that has helped get me better results. But as I come up on this um, upcoming marathon, I have an upcoming marathon in October. Uh, Mac and I have a super, super full October. Um, We are speaking Let's see, just in October or the October and the first part of November, we are speaking uh, in New York for a a conference up there for uh, Saratoga Springs school systems. We're speaking for um, a nonprofit Christian Women's Job Corps is hosting us for a leadership development class open to the community Um, in Alabama. We're speaking, I'm speaking at a gala for Safe House Project, um, the Hope Gala uh, in North Carolina in Charlotte in October. We're going to Dallas to do a couple of leadership events um, in Dallas. And then we fly to Wisconsin to speak at a conference there. And then right from Wisconsin, we fly to Missouri and spend a couple of days with the city of St. Peter. So we've super, super busy um, October, very blessed. And in the middle of all of that um, is my third marathon for this calendar year and my fourth marathon in 11 months. And, And the story behind that is I didn't really plan for that to work out that way. It just kind of fell that way with one of the races was um, a postponement for a race I'd signed up like a year and a half ago, and then it got deferred because of COVID. And then um, I didn't know that I was going to be accepted to run in the Boston Marathon. 
And so the, both of those races were this spring pretty close together. And that was on top of the one that I planned to run last year in California. So, you know, it just shook out that way. And I'm not unhappy about that at all. It has been um, a season of training and athletics and and really dialing into some of my potential. And that's a beautiful thing. But what hit me recently as I come up on this marathon, we're only, as I record this, I'm only about uh, 10 days away. And by the time you actually listen to this episode, it will have passed already. But um, what I realized, you know, and it's normal and it's natural. Anytime I talk about having an upcoming marathon, anyone that I'm running with will naturally say, well, what's your goal time? What's your goal time? You know, how fast do you want to run this one? And I always give myself a range Number one, because there are a lot of things that can go right. There are a lot of things that can go wrong in a marathon. We are talking about running for 26 miles. And, you know, best case scenario, I I have a goal range for best case scenario. Like the weather is perfect. I feel good. Nothing hurts. There's no toenails that get mad at me. No tummy troubles. I eat right. I nail my nutrition, hydration. You know, best case a scenario, this is what I can probably realistically expect to come in based based on my training and how I'm running right now. And then, you know, there's a another goal that's not as aggressive, that's mm, maybe it wasn't the, the weather didn't come out like I wanted it to or needed it to, or maybe, you know, just the travel or um, fatigue or a, a little injury or something like that. Anything could happen. And then, you know, last goal is always just finish. And, you know, that's always the, 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 the C goal in there is just finish, right? If I start the race, I want to just finish. And if that means walking, then I'm okay with that. But anyway, it's normal and it's natural as I, as I talk about the upcoming marathon and, um, you know, I've had a lot of support from my running buddies and running community and, and that's great. It's exciting to, to set the goal, but it's exciting to set the goal knowing that I've put the work in to be capable of getting the result that I want. And I've talked about that on some previous podcasts where we we fall to the level of our choices, right? We don't rise to the level of our dreams or hopes and expectations. We fall to the level in terms of performance, fall to the level of our choices and habits. And so it's very um, fulfilling to go into this knowing that I've put the work in, I've trained well, you know, made a lot of the right decisions to set me up for success doesn't mean I'll get there, right? It's total commitment to the process and total detachment from the outcome in terms of I'm not tying my self-worth to the result, right? I'm, I fortunately have grown beyond that, realizing that sometimes things don't come out like we expect. And, and that doesn't mean I'm a failure, right? Just because I don't necessarily hit that A or B or even C goal. So I say all of that to say that I've I've really realized as I talk to people about this goal, I just have a um, a, a comfort in that, right? A, a, a very comfortable level with the training and the work that I've put in, and also a very comfortable level with the outcome doesn't define me. But I also have a comfort level that I realize that my my journey is different than someone else's. My running journey is different than someone else's. And so I don't need to compare my running journey or my running times or my running marathon experience with someone else because everyone is different. Everyone is going to have a different experience. Uh, That's just the way it is. And so don't let comparison be the thief of your joy. Because the moment we start comparing our journey to someone else's, but our journey's different. But the moment we start comparing ourselves to someone else and we start to feel like we don't necessarily measure up, we, lo- we can lose our joy in the moment because then we tie our self-worth to the performance or the outcome. And really the only person that we should be comparing ourselves to is who we were yesterday, right? Michael Josephson said, you don't have to be sick to get better. There's nothing wrong with you. You just want to be better, be better than who you were and where you were yesterday. And that that's the only person you should really be worried about comparing yourself to. How am I doing relative to how I was doing yesterday? Am I a little bit better? Have I grown a little bit more? Have I changed a little bit of insight in myself or perspective? Have I grown in some dimension? 
if I just started making one choice better every day, think of how much different life would look in a year. If you got 365 better choices every day this upcoming year, you'd be in a totally different place this time next year, right? That's really the only person that we should be comparing ourselves to is who we were, where we were yesterday. And so relative to my running journey, that's what I I look at is rather than compare myself to someone who's been running for years and years or ran track in college or someone who's taller maybe or younger or older or more experienced, doesn't matter, right? My journey is different. I don't need to compare myself to others because that's the thief of joy. Right. So maybe that's not, maybe you're not into to running marathons. I recognize that. Many people think that I'm, uh, <laughs> that, that, that this is a slightly absurd hobby of mine. And I always tell people, like, running is my therapy. It's not necessarily cheaper than therapy, but it's better than therapy. Uh, for me, right? It's one of the things that it drives me to to eat better and sleep more and, you know, I, you know, make sure I'm stretching more and all of the, the things that go into holistic wellness. It really helps me with those healthy habits. And so, and I enjoy it that there's no doubt, um, maybe not enjoy the actual marathon, but actually having accomplished it because there again, there's that feeling of fulfillment when you work towards something and you reach that goal because you not because the goal is what gives you the fulfillment it's because you became the person who is capable of achieving the goal that's where the fulfillment comes into right not just focusing on the goal reaching it and quitting but but being growth oriented to the fact that you grow and become the person who is capable of doing the thing that you want to do. And then you're not going to go back, right? Just because you check the the goal and check it off of your bucket list, you're not going to quit because you're focused on becoming and the process of growing into that person that can achieve that. Not just the achievement itself. And that growth perspective makes it much more easier to be committed to the process and detached from the outcome. When sometimes things aren't expected. Things that get in our way that that don't go according to plan. There are days when it's not going to come out like we want to or like we work for. And that's okay. If we have our, our commitment to the process of growth and becoming the person who can do it, 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 you might not happen today, right? Sometimes it takes longer than we think. Sometimes it doesn't happen as quick or as fast or as easy. But that just means not yet. I'm not there yet. So even if I don't run the the goal time that I want to for this upcoming marathon in October, it just means not yet. Need to do a little more work perhaps, need to do a little more um, track work or speed work or work on my endurance maybe. You know, if I don't reach this goal, I need to go back and say I'm not there yet. And that's okay, right? Not there yet is a whole different ballgame than didn't make it at all. So it gives us that perspective and that depth of perspective allows us to say, you know what? Hey, I didn't reach it, but it's okay. Here's what I learned. Here's how I can apply this lesson going forward. And that's okay. I'm not a failure just because I didn't accomplish what I wanted to this season. So now apply that perspective. Let's say you want to start your own business. Apply that perspective to that. How much different is it than if you tie your sense of accomplishment into does the business make X amount of money the first month and then you don't? Because a lot of times starting a new business, it's going to take much more time than we think. It's going to take longer. It's going to be more difficult. It might take years. So we have to be committed to the growth and the process. And I've talked on that a little bit on previous episodes. And maybe it's not starting your own business. Maybe it's your health journey. And or maybe it's your career goals. Maybe it's your influence with your your 13-year-old. Whatever it is, it's really 
you know, not about comparing yourself to, to someone else. Don't compare your someone else in your career who's the same age as you. They've had a different career path. Maybe they started from a different place. I know lots and lots of people who started with more advantage, quote unquote, than I had growing up. And so I don't need to co compare myself to them in terms of a career because comparison is the thief of, of joy. My journey has been different. I started from a different place. And that's true for all of us. And so when I quit comparing myself to others, that frees me up to just simply focus on becoming the, the best version or accomplishing a little bit better version of myself, building a better version, of, if you will, today, right? Because then I, I, I quit stealing my own joy when I quit comparing myself to others. And I just focus on what do I need to do in this moment, in this season, or this day to be a little bit better. Not because there's something wrong with me, but I know I'm capable of more. I'm capable of better. And I don't have to get perfection here. I just need progress, right? You don't have to win all of the votes in the election. It's not what you do occasionally, that's defining you. It's what you do every single day, whether that's starting a business or growing your influence, running a marathon. You know, the thing about that, I love that analogy for, for running and I do use that a lot, but, but I, I think there's a lot of life lessons in there because you can't wing it. You can't just go out and wing running 26.2 miles. You can't do it. You have to prepare. You have to train. You have to be ready for it. And you can't wing life either, right? You have to grow. You have to develop yourself. Nobody's going to do it for you. you. You can't just wing it or you can just wing it, but you can't expect to get the results that you want if you wing it. There, that's, that's probably a better way to say that. Sure, you probably can wing it, but you won't get the result that you want if you wing it. And that's true for anything that you want to accomplish, right? You can't wing climbing Mount Everest that takes training and so much preparation and, and you know, all of the things that go into that. You can't just wing it. If you try to wing it on Mount Everest, I have a sneaky suspicion you won't come back, right? You can't wing it when it comes to influence and leadership. You can't, you can't wing it in relationships. And so I, that there again, I just, I like that analogy because it helps me relate so much to uh, the lessons in life. So don't compare yourself to others. And we get so caught up in that. And particularly as we enter the holiday season, this, this shows up in so many different ways. It's like, I have to have the biggest, prettiest, most Instagram worthy Christmas tree. Cause on my IG feed is going to be lots of pictures of everybody decorating the perfect Christmas tree on Thanksgiving weekend. And so then we feel the pressure, right? We got to have the perfect tree put up right on the Saturday after Thanksgiving because everybody else will. And it's got to be the most beautiful Christmas tree with the most coordinated lights. And we get so obsessed about having the thing to compare because everybody else does that we lose our ability to appreciate the joy in the moment, right? It's not about having the most beautiful Christmas tree. It's, it's about putting up the tree that makes you happy. And if that's homemade popcorn strings and 30-year-old homemade Christmas ornaments, then go for it, right? Because you're not comparing yourself or your Christmas tree to others. But so much of the time in the, the holiday season, I think especially it just shows up where we start to compare, well, did I give everybody the, the nicest gifts that they got from so-and-so? Am I the best friend because I gave them the gifts that somebody else would give them? Or um, is my house clean, <laughs> right? I'm comparing my house to, to the homes on the home garden channel on, I don't even know if they have a home garden channel Christmas show, but um, is my house clean for the party? Just like I would see it on TV. Do I have the perfect centerpiece or the perfect charcuterie board or, um, you know, this, the perfect Thanksgiving spread, right? You, you focus on doing what makes you happy, right? When you quit comparing yourself of others and you quit focusing on trying to get joy from the comparison game, then that frees you up to live your authentic self and focus on what's truly important to you. I quit decorating for Christmas years ago because number one, it was an awfully lot of work. And at some point I'm like, it's awfully fun to pull all the Christmas decorations out and decorate everything in the house. 
it's not any fun to put them back up. That's where the work came in. And I was like, I don't really enjoy that. And a lot of times we're not home for the, the holiday itself. And so I was dragging all of this stuff down, putting it up for a few weeks, and then packing it all back up. And it was a lot of work that I could devote my my time and attention towards something else and enjoy this season more. And then you know how much money I save on not buying a Christmas tree every year, right? And now that I'm not saying that that's your choice or that you should quit decorating for Christmas. You do what makes you happy. I'm saying that's one way to to show up authentically for myself is saying, you know what? The decorations themselves are not what brings me joy at Christmas. And so when I realize that, I'm like, well, I'm not going to put up Christmas decorations just because everybody else does or most people do, right? I, why am I doing this? If I'm not enjoying the process of pulling them down and putting them up, then I need to quit doing that, right? Probably nobody else is interested in, in, in what my Christmas tree looks like. So I need to quit worrying about that, right? That's one reason we can show up more, more authentically for ourselves is stop comparing ourselves to others. And I, I forget who I was talking to the other day. Um, I don't remember who it was, but someone was, was sharing with me that they, uh, they don't do a traditional Thanksgiving uh, style meal. They don't do a turkey because they don't really like turkey. And I thought that is so refreshing, right? How many of us are doing the the traditions just because we've been told that that's what people do on this certain day, right? And maybe it doesn't work for us and maybe it does. And maybe you're totally enmeshed in your traditions and that's okay. I'm not trying to talk you out of them, but I am saying if it's not working out for you, or if you're just going through the motions and it's time to look at that and say, well, if I'm not enjoying this, why am I doing it to begin with? Right there again, when you quit comparing yourself to others, you can start focusing on the things that are most important to you until next time.